Good day grade 12s. Welcome to lesson 83 from the Distinction Bound Student Textbook Grade 12, written by Cardin Madzokir. My name is Viola from the Distinction Bound Student. This is the first video for Term 3. In this lesson we will cover Unit 1, Economic Growth and Development. Before we get started, I will first give you an overview for this term's work. The first module for Term 3 is Economic Pursuits, which prepares you for Paper 1 Questions 1, 3, 4, and 6. Under this module, we have three topics namely economic growth and development, industrial development policies of South Africa and lastly economic and social performance indicators. This will be covered in 15 lessons. The second module for the term is Contemporary Economic Issues of the Day, which prepares you for paper 2 questions 1, 3, 4, and 6. This module also has three topics namely inflation, tourism and environmental sustainability which will also be covered in 15 lessons. So after the 30th lesson of the term, you will be ready for the trial exams in September and the final exam in November. Here at TDBS we believe that our textbooks give you enough information for you to get a distinction. All our complete versions with answers cost 250 rands and all our no answers versions go for 200 rands and you can order on thedistinctionboundstudent at gmail.com or c-a-r-d-e-n-m-a-d-z-o-k-e-r-e at gmail.com. Alternatively you can call us on 0738840877. Let's get into the lesson. Before I give you the definitions, I'll start with a bit of general information that you need to know. The economy of South Africa is the second largest in Africa behind Nigeria. It accounts for 24% of its GDP in terms of purchasing power parity and is ranked as an upper middle income economy by World Bank. This makes the country one of only four countries in Africa in this category. In case you are wondering, other countries are Botswana, Gabon and Mauritius. Since 1996, at the end of over 12 years of international sanctions, South Africa's GDP has almost tripled to US$419 billion as of 2021. Foreign exchange reserves have increased from US$3 billion to nearly US$50 billion, creating a growing and sizable African middle class, within two decades of establishing democracy and ending apartheid. Now, what is economic growth? Do you think there is a difference between economic growth and economic development? Well, stay tuned in order for you to find out. Economic growth is defined as an increase in the production capacity of a country. It is an increase in the real value of production and income and it is reflected by an increase in the value of real GDP. Remember real GDP, also known as GPD at constant prices is different from nominal GDP, which is also known as GDP at current prices. To determine growth, we use real GDP and not nominal GDP. If you want to understand GDP in more depth, I'll drop a link in the description down below, which will take you to lesson 5. Cardin also did a separate video explaining the difference, I'll also link it down below. While you are down there checking the link, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. That would mean a lot to us here at TDBS. Moving on, growth is usually calculated in real terms, that is, inflation-adjusted terms which is done to eliminate the distorting effects of inflation on the price of goods and services produced. Now that we know what economic growth is, let's look at economic development. Economic development is defined as structural changes in the economy that can lead to an increase in the standard of living and an increase in the level of economic welfare of people. Economic development would result in a more equal distribution of wealth and income of people living in a country. It leads to better access to health care and education of the poor. I'm sure you can clearly see the difference between growth and development. Economic growth deals with things and economic development deals with people. Economic development policies are policy intervention endeavors that aim economic and social well-being of people, whereas economic growth policies focus on increasing the production capacity of goods and services. In case you were wondering, since people are more important than things, then why does the South African government have economic growth as one of their five macroeconomic objectives instead of economic development? Does it mean that our government is cruel? Well, with regards to this, they are not. Let me make it clear for you. If the government makes growth a priority, they will implement policies that encourage production. What is needed for production to take place? Answer. The four factors of production namely, land, labor, capital and entrepreneurship. Who owns these factors? Answer. Households. Who gets paid for these factors? Answer. Households. When households get paid for these factors, what do they do? We all know that they buy goods and services. 
their ability to buy more goods and services improve their standards of living. So if the government focuses on economic growth, indirectly they will be positively affecting economic development since growth leads to development. With what we have covered so far in this lesson, what kind of questions would you expect in the exam? Well, in section A, you can find all our key terms like economic growth, economic development, real GDP, nominal GDP, and more as options in multiple choice. We can also find these terms in column A with matching descriptions in column B. These terms could also be your answers in question 1.3 which is the most difficult question in section A. Unlike questions 1.1 and 1.2, where learners choose answers from given options, learners are expected to give answers from their heads. This makes 1.3 more challenging than the other two. Make sure you master the definitions of key terms covered so far in order for you to excel in section A. When it comes to section B, you can be asked in question 3.1.1 or 4.1.1 to list any two characteristics of developing countries. Don't be surprised, we are about to look into that shortly. Also expect to define key terms in our data response questions 3.2 and 3.3. Also expect to describe either economic growth or development for 8 marks. Lastly, expect to distinguish between economic growth and economic development for 4 marks each. This shouldn't be a challenge at all since we gave you clear distinctions between the two. As we proceed on with our lesson, let's look at characteristics of a developing countries. In Africa, we have developing countries, and South Africa is no exception. Here are the characteristics, low standards of living, high levels of unemployment, low levels of productivity, high birth rates, overpopulation, dependence on primary sector or we can say agriculturally based economy, deficient infrastructure high mortality rate, illiteracy, unskilled workforce, low social mobility, low per capita income, malnutrition, strong attachment to tradition, history of colonialism and more. Looking at these characteristics, you can clearly see that these issues are more common in developed or poor countries than they are in developed or rich countries. Lesson 87 will cover this in depth as we will look at the north-south divide. At the moment I can't drop a link to lesson 87 since we haven't made that video yet. We will drop the link as soon as we are done with it. In conclusion, let's look at economic policies. Effective policies must be in place and well implemented to ensure economic growth and development. There are two major determinants of growth, that is, growth in demand and growth in supply. Governments may focus on both demand and supply side of the economy to try and stimulate demand and to try and increase supply. This brings us to our homework activity 74. Question 1. What do we call an increase in the standards of living of the population? 2 marks. Question 2. What do we call an increase in the capacity of the economy to produce more goods and services? 2 marks. Question 3. Differentiate economic growth from economic development. 8 marks. Question 4. Name any four redress measures currently used in South Africa. 4 marks. This brings us to the end of today's lesson. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also hit the notification bell for you to get notified every time we post new content to our channel. We are also giving away the Distinction Bound Student t-shirts to people who buy more than 10 books. At the moment we have the following textbooks, Economics Grade 10, 11 and 12 plus Business Studies Grades 11 and 12. We are looking forward to adding more books to our catalog. Remember our books come in two versions, Complete and No Answers versions. Complete versions have answers and No Answers versions do not. Thank you so much for your support. See you in the next video. God bless.